Hey, what's up guys? My name is Kaylee and welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for watching. So I wanted to start a new series called Pillow Talk and you may ask, Kaylee, where did you get that name from? Well, let me tell you. I have a pillow and I'm gonna talk. Yeah, clever, right? So <laughs> for, the, for this series, um, I'm probably not gonna do it like all in one go. This is just gonna be like, these types of videos are gonna have kind of a certain context. So for Pillow Talk, what I wanted to do was like story times and I wanted to do some others like if I ever did a Q&A, which I probably will never do because no one's going to ask me questions. But if I were today, I wanted to do a story time and I have tried so many times to record this video. The first time my SD card, that was when my old SD card was breaking. So the camera kept turning off after like every 30 seconds. And then the next time it was like the same situation. I hadn't bought a new SD card yet, but I hadn't really understood what the problem was. So this is my third and hopefully final try. So this is my horrible taxi story time. So uh, I was living in Beijing from January 2017 until June of 2017. At the time, I didn't know any Chinese except to say thank you and um, like I don't want or something like that. And it, like, I had a good time when I was living in Beijing, but the problem with the big city is that, like, it's so big. It takes forever to get anywhere. My mom was visiting me along with my cousin, and my mom and I had gone on a walk in Stanley Toon. And we, I had just gotten her back to her hotel, and we asked the hotel to call me a taxi. Not that they were going to pay for it, just for them to get the taxi there, because her hotel was, like, off a of main street like kind of, like not the back alley but there wasn't a whole lot of traffic there so it was a little bit harder to get taxis especially at that time of night so the taxi guy showed up and i showed him my address and i had it typed into like the notes in my phone and the way it was written i could copy and paste it into my gps and it would show me exactly where my apart apartment was and this was like three months after i had moved to beijing i think and so I showed him my address and he like glanced at it and he's like, okay. And some like backstory, he looked like Han from Tokyo Drift and he had like headphones and he was just, he seemed really relaxed and chill. I was like, cool. Cause sometimes I get like really creepy taxi drivers. So we get going and he's driving crazy fast, like in, China, they do have traffic rules, but they don't really have to follow them. And there are a lot of accidents here. Usually it's not anything too bad, but I don't know. Traffic is a whole different story. Anyway, so he's driving incredibly fast and I get car sick and it was really late and I was really tired. So I just closed my eyes. And you know, once in a while I would open them and kind of see like what the situation was and then I would like close them again. But I noticed like he was driving really, really fast for a really long time. Like it only takes about 30 minutes from my mom's hotel to get to my old apartment, at least when you take a taxi. And like we had been going for probably about 20 minutes and I noticed he had gone through like two toll boots. I was like, I'm not, the first one I was like, maybe he's just taking a shortcut. I don't really know, I'm not gonna say anything. But then the second one, I was like, okay, that's a little weird. Like he shouldn't, no. And so I took out my phone and I put my address into my GPS and we were still like weirdly far from where I was supposed to be. But I wasn't sure if, it, you know, like I wasn't sure what the situation was. So I was just watching and like, we weren't getting much closer as we were driving and the taxi driver started noticed, noticing that, like, what I was looking at, and he was like, oh, what's that? I was like, well, this is my destination. And he was like, what? And he looked at it, and he's like, no, that's wrong. I was like, what? And keep in mind, I didn't know any Chinese, so we were kind of, like, talking with our hands mostly and, like, talking in our own languages and guessing what the other was saying, basically. 
but you know, but more or less, this is how the situation went. And he was like, no, that's wrong. And I was like, what? And I showed, so I took out my maps of the Beijing subway line because I lived like in this little suburb called Beiyuan and it had like its own subway station. So if he could get me there, I could walk home. I was like, this is where I'm going. This is my address. And he was like, no, that's wrong. And I was like, what do you mean that's wrong? This is where I'm going. He's like, no, 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 that's not what you told me. I was like, copy, paste. This is where we're going. This is what you looked at. And so he just, he was getting kind of like ruffled and like frazzled and frustrated, I guess. I don't know. That was a lot of adjectives. And so he looks at it and he gets going again. But he, like he looks at it for a second and then he gives me my phone back and he gets going again. And then like after two minutes, he stops. Like, cause the first time he was still kind of driving slowly. Like he didn't stop when we are having that like conversation. The next time he like stops and pulls over to the side of the road and he's like looking at my phone and like we start getting into an argument. And I was stressed out cause I didn't know where I was. This guy didn't know how to get me home and it was the middle of the night. And um, the meter was already at like 150 kwai, which was more or less what it took to get me back and forth not not really not even that usually it'd only take like a hundred quad to get me from my apartment to my mom's hotel i think i don't know it was a while ago either ways 150 quad is like 20 bucks ish so i was like god he doesn't even know where he's taking me i'm already like 20 dollars out of it and i was getting really upset because i was also getting really anxious and scared this guy didn't know where he was going and he didn't know what he was doing and so then um, we were kind of like, not like yelling at each other, but he was getting, he was yelling at me at this point already. So I just like, I took the hundred, cause it was like 155 or 152. I took 150 quiet, put it on my seat and I got out of the taxi and he like comes out after me. And at this point I lost it. And like, I never scream at people. I might get a little loud sometimes cause I'm just a loud person, especially when I talk, but I've never yelled at someone or like, except for my brother, but I've never yelled at someone or screamed at someone and I did with him. Cause I just like, I lost it. He was blaming me when it my like I showed him the correct address. I did like, I showed him the map of the subway. Like he was getting mad at me. I had paid him. I had told him where to go. And he was the one who was wrong the whole entire time. And so I was livid. And I just started telling him, it's the middle of the night. You got me lost. I don't know where I am. Just let me go. Just let me go. And he was like, call someone, call someone. I'm like, it's the middle of the night. No one's going to answer. Um, but he wouldn't let it go. So I, I called one of my friends, no answer. I called another one of my friends, no answer. I called another one of my friends and no answer. I was like, there's nothing else I can do. I was like, you call someone. And he was like, no, no, no. So then he said something. I don't remember what he said or like what it, he thought, I don't even know what he, like, I thought he said, like, at the time I was just, I was so done. So he's, I guess for my expression, cause like there gets to be a point when I'm angry when I just like, I just shut down and like, so he thought that like I was agreeing with him or something or like that I had decided I would go back. I don't know. So he starts walking back to the car thinking I was going to follow him. And I was like, no. F that, not, no, 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 never getting back in the car with this man. And so he walks back towards the car and then I start going in the opposite direction and I hear him yell and he like runs back to his car, supposedly to probably chase me or something, I don't know. I, as soon as I got to a crosswalk, I like ran across the crosswalk and I started going in the other direction and I just like, I kept going and I was just crying and I was like so upset and so scared and none of my friends were answering their phone. And then, um, I was like, and I was like watching, hoping he wasn't going to come after me. And I saw a taxi parked up ahead. So I was walking on the sidewalk and the way the road was set up, it was like the sidewalk, the bike lane, a median with a bunch of trees, the road with two lanes, you know, for cars. And then the same on the other side, like a bike lane, median, whatever. So it was like kind of like a tunnel of trees that I was walking in. So it was really dark. The street lamps were on the road, not so much in the bike lane. Like I could still see where I was going, but you know, like if that one guy was looking for me, it would be harder to see me because it was so dark. Anyways, so I saw a taxi probably like uh, 50 meters ahead. And I was like, 
oh my God, he found me. And I like my heart stopped and I was freaking out. But then the rational part of my brain was like, okay, Kaylee, this guy is already parked. You did not see anyone drive by you and there's no turn in from the road in this area. So logically it cannot be him and you need to find a taxi to get home. So I like crept up and I looked and you could tell like this guy was on his break. It was not the same guy cause like his feet were up. He was playing a phone game, totally relaxed. I was like, okay, hopefully like I'll ask him and hopefully he'll agree to drive me home. Because in big cities, at least Beijing, they're allowed to deny you a fare or whatever you call, like, I guess that's what it's called, I don't know. So the, like what happened to me a lot and what still happens to me when I go to a big city is like I'll wave them down and then they'll stop, roll down their window, look at me and be like, no, I'm not taking you. I just wanted to look at you, bye. So I was scared that this was gonna happen, but um, I went and I like, I knocked on the window and I had typed into my translator like, can you help me, I'm lost. This guy was the closest thing to a guardian angel I have ever thought of in my entire life or like ever believed in, ever seen, whatever. This guy was my guardian angel and I will explain why. So he was, like he was on break and he was like smoking, but right away, like he read what I said and he like, he, you know, he was like, come in, come in, come in. And he was like dressed very nicely and like, not like a suit, but like a sports jacket and like trousers, like very nice, very clean. His hair was very like trimmed. Um, so he had like, he had really, sorry. He had really good hygiene. And then also the, like he followed every single rule to a T, every single one. Even when his GPS was wrong at one point, he still followed it. Mm-hmm. and. So when I first got in there, I showed him my address and um, like I had like, before I knocked on the one, I had like dried my tears, but like he could tell I was upset and I think he was like a little bit scared. He was like, whoa. So what he did is he like took out his phone and he kind of typed in my address and he was able to show me like a picture of my apartment um, cause it was called Mo Fang Go, no, Mo Fang, Mo Fang Apartments. Um, in Chinese, you call that Mo Fang Go Yu, which is like apartment buildings, like, Mofang apartment buildings. Anyways, so he showed me a picture and he's like, is it this? And I was like, yeah, yeah, just take me home. And so he's like, can you plug in your seatbelt? And I was like, I was so touched because never in, except for my, one of my bosses here in Wangshang, never have I ever been asked to put on a seatbelt. I was like, oh yeah, yeah, okay. So I put in my seatbelt and then like we drive and he drove very safely, very calmly. Like just his presence, he was so, like in control of himself, he was very kind and he was, you know, followed all the rules. I felt very safe with him. And I think if I had been with any other taxi driver, like I would have just been completely traumatized. But this guy like really helped me and really saved me and took care of me. And he got me home and he made sure I got my receipts and and it was another like 150 kwai. So I spent like 300 kwai, which is like $50 just to get home. And um, at my, at the time boyfriend, we lived in the same building. He told me like earlier that night, he was like, okay, just come over when you get home. I'll leave my key under the mat. And I was like, okay, cool. So at first I was like, I don't know. I kind of want to just be alone and cry, but I also don't want to be alone right now. So I went straight to his room and he had forgotten to put the key under the door. He didn't answer his cell phone. He didn't leave his key for me. (laughs) So I went upstairs and I just cried all night until I fell asleep. Um, And my friends felt so bad the next day, but that was my story. I'll include a screenshot of the map that I took of where I was when, like, when the taxi driver first stopped, when I realized we weren't in the right area. um, I opened Google Maps and like I took a picture of it. And I'll show you like where I was supposed to be kind of and like the where I ended up. So yeah, that was my story. Uh, Not all taxi drivers are like that. There are some really amazing taxi drivers like the one that brought me home at the very end. He was amazing and I've met some really awesome taxi drivers here too. But always make sure to be careful when you get in a taxi. What I would do is just like I did is have Google Maps with your address in it so you can watch where they're going. Um, when you don't speak the same language, don't just kind of hope for the best, like be safe, take care of yourself and always have backups. 
So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed that story. It was probably really long and I'm sorry, but it took me forever to record this. So I'm glad to finally get out the way. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you guys have a great day. Bye.